Welcome to Bound by Books. I am host Danielle Bannister. I write romance and romantic suspense. And with me today is... I am Sherry Hayes, and I write steamy contemporary romance and BDSM romance. So the, we, we, we've got the heat, your heat levels covered yes. here yes. between the two of us. So... What have you been up to lately, Danielle? I, 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 I a little birdie thing told me that you may have a book coming out here soon. <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, uh, on my birthday, I had a cover reveal, um, on October fifth, and I decided, you know what? It may be my birthday, but I'm going to do a cover reveal and give a little prize to <laughs> to other people. Um, and let me just say, in hindsight, never, never do anything on your birthday, sort of release wise or cover wise, because your timeline is nothing but people wishing you happy birthday, and it is so. It's like, yeah, stop wishing me happy birthday and look at my post. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I can see where that would be. Yeah, that I I can see oh, that. Oh, I, tip for people <laughs> in the future: don't do that. I've done yeah, that once but, with a release on my birthday, and that was not good. So I'm like, eh. oh, I couldn't yeah. even imagine that. It was that bad. Would be horrible. It was bad. It was bad. It's like I, it's like you have to you you need to put that on your calendar. You know, like when you're making a release calendar, as like the days not to pick to release. Yeah. It's yep. like or do any type of reveals like yeah. birthday. Don't no, do it. big X. Yep. And oh, and now and now wow. Facebook has like this thing like that anytime somebody posts, it also posts to your messenger. So you have messenger messages and timeline messages. My head was going oh. to explode. Uh, so just that sounds so overwhelming. Be ready for that <laughs> if you ever have. So, but yes, I, I have a cover reveal uh, for a book that's going to release in November. So that's going to be a, a not fun long. one. Yeah, that one is going to be a, a definitely different uh, than than the series that I've got going out there. The series of mm -hmm. where you uh, where you left me is still got two more books to come that'll that'll come early next year. But this particular mm -hmm. book has been on the the back burner for a long <laughs> time it's been done i just i've been waiting sort of for the right time to do it and uh and this what's one, it called this one's called waiting in the wings and it's about a, a an actor and their sort of potential big break waiting in the wings of a theater that sort of thing um, I have right. a, a history of of theater <clears throat> a background so I'm like you know I'm gonna bring what I know about the the stage to the page and I had a, a local friend a local mm -hmm. main playwright write the play that my actors are going to rehearse so some of his script mm -hmm. lives in the pages <clears throat> of my book so it was a, a fun little sort of collaborative sort of work so that sounds fun it, it, it was fun it was definitely a, an interesting way I would tell him certain <laughs> things that I needed for my book I'm like I need a, a you know a male character that looks alike about this and you know, it'd be great if maybe we could get them to kiss in the script. And so he kind of created a play based on what I needed. So it was great. It was great. Oh, that sounds awesome. So you kind of like got a little bit of a director type of a situation too. Like, I oh, did. I need you to go here and yeah. do this. And yeah. oh, that yeah. sounds like fun. So are you, are you still working on the other one uh, while you're, you know? Yes. Yes. Well, you've been doing all this. I'm assuming. <laughs> this, one, this one was already done. I just needed it to go to the editor. So while the editor's looking at it, I'm just kind of working on the marketing piece, <clears throat> getting it ready for prep. But I'm also for like writing time. I'm working on the series, book four, uh, volume uh, four and five, mm -hmm. to finish the series. So it's like it's a it's a train of activity, of a well planned. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not well planned, but a planned. <laughs> Yes, Miss Planner, we know, it's we know. Planned. It may not be the best plan, but it's a plan. What about well, I'm you? Still trying to, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going next. Mm -hmm. I know that I want to start working on the sixth book in my Finding Anna series. However, I'm kind of feeling that I want to explore... Uh, so a, a novella trilogy which would be a spinoff from the book I just pu recently published Claiming His Kiss um, my hero in that story has three adult children oh. 
there's so, potential. <clears throat> yes, and we we kind of hint a lot in that book um, that, especially about the oldest daughter. Um, but we also, you know, we get to meet and see all three children in um, right. in claiming his kiss. So I'm I'm kind of thinking I want to do, but I don't want to do like full length novels for them. Um, I want to do kind of I'm thinking probably like around the forty fifty thousand word mark. So, um, because you had big see. books, I do, yeah. I do big books. Yeah, I have, I have well, my novel. I have one that's 76,000 words yeah. and they go all the way up from there all the way up to 146,000. So my novels are not small at all. So um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that um, I want to kind of explore that. And with NaNoWriMo coming up, I'm potentially thinking that I want to try to tackle um, one of those yeah. and see how it goes. Yeah. So we will, we will see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll NaNoWriMo is always a challenge of whether or not uh, yeah. get it done. I always want to, but I, some some years are better than others. So. Yes, well, well, with NaNoWriMo, that's a perfect kind of segue into what we're going to, we, we wanted to talk about today. We, oh, were, yeah. we were discussing, like, what do we want to talk about? You know, what's what's relevant right now? And, of course, for all of us in the Northern Hemisphere... Of this planet, we are getting ready to go into the winter months here very, very shortly. And with that comes an increase in depression, anxiety, all those lovely, fun things that nobody wants to talk about, but we all need to talk about. And those things that make it a challenge when you're a creative person or a creator of of content or, you know, Mm -hmm. written words, it's hard to sometimes get past that sort of mental block that comes with these more depressive uh, times of the year. And so we thought we would share, you know, some of the things that we personally do to sort of help combat that. Like I know myself, I have struggled with depression and have been treated for depression in the past. I don't know if you have personal struggles with that or not yeah I have too yeah Yeah, I've I've yeah I was uh I was treated for this was quite a few years ago but um I was treated for depression and anxiety um and it's something that for most of us even if we're treated for it it's something we always have to be conscious about and take act an active role in treating ourselves and trying to prevent going into that deep you know viral abyss that is depression um or even anxiety because anxiety can be just as crippling absolutely um as depression absolutely Absolutely. so um so yeah so we wanted to kind of give some like daniel said some ideas that um you know may or may not help for you yeah 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 and we'll see um, one of, I would, I would highly recommend to throw this out here. Um, I would highly recommend a book called the artist way. Oh yeah. I've read that. Um, and it's, it's really, it doesn't really focus on depression and anxiety or anything like this as far as like mental health exactly, but it does talk about how to rejuvenate your creative side. Yeah. And a lot of those tips and tricks that she recommends I find are very helpful with this one of which I think is most helpful is the brain dump she recommends sitting down first thing every morning and just doing a brain dump just spend 10-15 minutes just just writing down whatever pops into your head and I, I have a good especially... author friend who does that three pages. She has to do a yeah. minimum of three pages by hand mm-hmm. and, and just dump before she does anything else. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I find that's really helpful, especially if you suffer from anxiety, because a lot of times it's that voice in your head that's telling you, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you screwed this up. You might as well just give up and, right. you know, not try and getting all of that down out on paper so that you can 
see it and just let it go yeah or you know just work through it um instead of letting it just fester in your head and in your heart um what about you what's what's a tip that uh that is worth for you <laughs> well, well one thing that i do i i i work from home i'm a re- remote yeah. worker so my day job is remote so it would be very easy for me to just live on my couch and in my pajamas <laughs> all the time. I mean, I literally would not, I mean, even my meetings, you know, it's like this. So, you know, I could be in a full pajama onesie and no one would know. But one mm-hmm. of the things that I do for my mental health is I make sure that I get dressed every day. I put on mm-hmm. a bra even, even if I'm working mm-hmm. remotely, I'm putting that mental piece on and going, you know what? I am going to be gearing up to be productive today. And when I'm in my pajamas, there is definitely a a sense in my body of, oh, I can be a little bit more slacky. I don't have to rush things. So on the weekends, I stay in my pajamas as long as humanly possible so that I can just veg and be a potato. But there's something about the act of getting dressed for me Mm -hmm. that helps mentally prepare me for the day. So I guess Mm -hmm. that's something that I do, even if you end up being somebody who's working remotely is, you know, it's that same mentality of like making your bed as soon as you wake up or something. It's you've checked something off the list already. You're already ahead of the game. You've done one thing, you've done it. And for me that, that, okay, I'm ready to tackle the day and I'm in good headspace once I'm dressed. (laughs) A lot of times it's as little wins. Yeah. It really is. It is as little wins and, and getting dressed and me putting a bit of makeup on, if that's your thing, doing your hair, whatever it is, just getting that little bit of really self-care yeah. can help with, yeah. with the mental state. It, it you know, it doesn't, you, you wouldn't think that it would help that much, but it, it really does. I mean, there's, um, there's several like if you ever subscribe to any of the cleaning like gurus type things every single one of them are like start with get dressed yeah get dressed that's the first thing and it sounds like you know how many people you know are ma i know my mom she used to clean in her pajamas all the time when she when i was growing up there was no you know what but it just it does do something to your mental state where it flips that switch it says, okay, it's time to get my day started. I, right. I'm not going to veg on the couch all day. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely thinks. Um, one of the other things I think is really good it, and it's harder if you work from home, which a lot of authors do. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, if you don't have a full day job and even if you do, like the two of us, we both have day jobs, yeah. but both of our day jobs are from home. Yeah. So getting out and connecting with people, like actual human beings. People, introverts, why must we? Yes. Why? Yes. (laughs) So, and I know, I know that it's hard for introverts. It really is. Um, But even if you got to take that first step of doing like virtual connecting, you know, find a group of friends, even if they're fellow author friends. I mean, we we connected, you know, our group, our mod pod, as yeah. Marianne likes to call us. Uh, you know, we connected and you know, we have we have a chat open all the time. Yeah. Um that that's a sanity and, saver for for an author for a fellow creative. If you yeah. can find a group of like minded creatives who are sort of at or near your same level of you know where you're at it really helps motivate you too even on days that maybe you're not feeling it because maybe your sales are down or you didn't meet a deadline that you wanted to do or you got a bad review and that can just as an author it, it, you you can just get stuck in your head mm-hmm. because it's just you. You're in charge of everything and it, it's all you. And it can be very easy to just kind of get down on yourself. But if you've got that group around you of support and you can just vent and say, I'm having a really bad you know, day, my sales are down. And then you can have these people championing, okay, what can we do? And so it, it it's really, I think, a good mental health thing if, if you can oh, yeah. find some authors that can sort of lift you up. And And I do say sort of, 
around the same level as you only because the, the sort of advice and stuff that other authors would give you is going to vary depending on their level. If you've got a brand new author in the same group as a, you know, a multi-billion sale author, the, the type of advice that's going to be given is going to be a little different. The level of support is different. Mm -hmm. So the I options think that you yeah, have, especially if right. it's like you're down because your sales are down or something like that. Right. If you're talking to somebody who's bringing in six figures consistently and you're somebody who's lucky if they make $100 worth of sales in a month, yeah. the advice that that six figure author, figure author is going to give you is, I mean, I'm not saying it would always be useless, but it, it'll probably uh, depress you even more because you won't be able to do the things that are suggested. Right, right. I mean, it, it just is like, I have I have listened to other podcasts. Uh, you know, I listen to quite a variety of other author podcasts. And while I do find, um, you know, advice that's helpful in them, I do find that the, oftentimes it's like, if it's, if it's gearing you towards do this, do that marketing wise, it's always stuff that costs money, you know, like everybody's like, Oh, do a book bug fe book bug feature deal. It's right. like, well, that's, 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 that's great. If you have a thousand dollars lying around right. um, and, you know, and can do that. Yes. They're great investments because right. they, they 99% of the time they earn their man money back right. and then right. some, but you still have to have the thousand dollars. And right. if you are an author, that's only making, you know, like I said, a hundred dollars a month. And you think that That's... you're, you're, you're limitless now. You, you can't do it. So now I'm just going to give right. up. And so you just sink deeper into the pressure. So if you're worried about sort of right. making sure your mental health is staying where it needs mm -hmm. to and, and lifting up, try to find people that are sort of at or near where you're at, just from a mental health <laughs> stuff that you're not always looking right. at. So I'm like, I'm never going to make it. Right. right. I also think though it's important to branch out outside of the author mm -hmm. sphere as well for the mental health. Sure. Find a hobby yes. that is has nothing to do with <laughs> writing. Right. Um, when it I was I was um reading a book once uh, again about and I think it might have been the artist way. I can't swear to that because I read quite a bit, both nonfiction and fiction, but they were talking about how what you you may have gotten into something because you loved it mm -hmm. and it was a hobby that you then turned into a career but the minute that you did that you jumped from turning it from a hobby to a career it is no longer a hobby because right. you are now focused on it as a money making right thing right. versus a, an enjoyment thing now it's not right. to say you're not getting enjoyment out of writing but it's just your focus and your main motivation is different. Sure. So find something that you enjoy. Right. It, maybe it's pottery. Maybe it's, I mean, I go and play maybe pickleball. It's Ooh. Yeah, maybe it's theater. I go and play pickleball nice. with a group of ladies once a week. Nice. And, you know, it's, it's, it's active. Yeah. So that's, that helps with your mental health. But it also, and it gets me social because yeah. I'm, interacting with other people and it's you know it's it's fun it also gives you life experience that you can then turn into story inspiration later exactly you gotta go out exactly. there and live the life so you can write about may life ha may have to come <laughs> up with a, a a couple that meets a pickleball i'm just i'm, I'm just saying. saying i mean why not <laughs> why not and so i guess my my other point to yours you're, you're saying you know making sure that you're going out and you're you're, you're doing things with other people i would i would say you know for the introverts that are like <laughs> <laughs> um, I would counter that with at least get outside. If you can't yeah. feel like you can people, at least get outside. And I have to say this as somebody who does not enjoy nature. Nature <laughs> is always trying to kill me. I, the second I step outside, bugs are dive bombing me. Ragweed is making my eyes itch. And just nature does not enjoy me being out there. And I don't enjoy it. But I force myself to get out there because I know it's good for my mental health to be outside and breathing mm -hmm. fresh air. Gotta get that vitamin D in. I, I, must I? Must I? <laughs> yes. I take You must. You must. <laughs> 
But no, I mean, even if it's just walking to your mailbox, get outside, even in those cold, cold months when the, the, the air is so cold that your snot freezes the second you get outside, get outside, do a little shoveling, get some fresh air in you. And, you know, especially if you're starting to feel that oh, feeling mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, the, the world sort of feels like it's you, you've got to sort of break out of sort of the environment that's kind of making you feel that way and if you're just kind of stuck in your little corner and you get out of it and just yeah put yourself in a different situation and sometimes that that cold snap will be like okay I'm back (laughs) I'm back yeah yeah it's amazing how sometimes just getting out there and getting that fresh air taking a little walk I mean you don't have to go far I mean just just taking that little bit of basic exercise can can help not only mentally but physically yeah you know authors are notorious for not having the best um physical health because we it's a sedentary job yeah yeah and unless you make active goals to combat that um then you know it goes in the wrong direction yeah, my son keeps trying to take out the trash for me. I'm like, no, stop it. That is my mental health walk. You leave that trash alone. That is mine. Aww. Oh, you're like, you get to go out and go to school right. and get your walking get and exercise trash. that way. <laughs> what else? Is there anything else that uh, that you would suggest to, to folks? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. it sounds kind of counterintuitive because, you know, we're, we're sitting here saying like, oh, don't don't laze around the house and, you know, stay in your pajamas all day and things like that. But you need to get a good night's sleep. And authors are horrible yep. Yep. at getting, we you need know, being in a routine. routine just like a toddler does. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Your body works. Bodies work best on a routine. They really yeah. do. And, you know, you can sit there and be like, oh, no, I don't need a routine. And, you know, maybe if you're in your 20s, you can maybe get away with it. And you it's not get that your body it. doesn't like it. It's not that your body is like, oh, I don't care. It's right. just you're young enough that your body can adapt if need be. <laughs> but if, you you're in that, <laughs> if you're in that situation, just wait, because as yeah. you get older, your body starts to rebel and say, uh, 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 yep. yeah. this does not work anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's getting on that routine, yep. going, you know, going to bed around the same time every yeah, night, absolutely. getting up around the same time, yep. every morning. your body, your body's internal clock starts to, your brain works better too. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Your brain knows when it's supposed to shut off, yeah. when it's supposed to wake up. So, and you know, studies have shown that that the having getting a full seven to nine hours of sleep every night is extremely beneficial for your mental and physical absolutely. well-being. Absolutely, absolutely, so absolutely. Getting and I guess that sleep. One thing that I would add to to that to the sleep piece, which is mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with something that I've started and I've been doing for the last few years and I found that it's been really good for my mental health is I have a I have a little journal like this I have two of these I have mm. one for one for the morning and and one for nighttime <laughs> just a little journal and at night I write down three things that I am grateful for uh, yes, I did gratitude. start writing down things that I wanted to do the next day, like things that I wanted to make sure I got done. But I found that that gave me anxiety and I couldn't fall asleep mm. because all I could think about were the things that I had to do the next day. So I said, no, mm. no, no, I don't want to be thinking about my to-do list. I can, I can work on that in the morning. I want to be, what are the things, three things that happened that day that I'm absolutely grateful for so that I can, my heart is in a good, happy place and I can just go to sleep mm-hmm. with ease. And that has, mm-hmm. I notice on the days that I'm too tired and I'm like, I don't need to do that. I, I definitely have a harder time falling mm-hmm. asleep yeah. if I don't just take a, a minute. Yeah. To- now, see, I'm kind of a little bit opposite of that because I feel less anxiety when I fill out my calendar for the next day with all of my to-dos. Gotcha. Before I go to bed, because then I am... I'm like, okay, I have, I have purged my, my brain 
of all of the stuff. I have put it down on paper. It will be there tomorrow. I don't have to try to be thinking about it in the morning when my brain maybe isn't quite as right. alert. I guess maybe it depends on if you're a night person or a morning person. I'm yeah. definitely more of a morning person. So I think better in the morning. So I I tackle that sort of to-do list in the morning with my coffee mm-hmm. and you know, okay, I've got the energy and I've got the, yes, I'm very ambitious first thing in the morning. <laughs> but not, it's a, it's a, mission it's a listening to your body type of yeah. a thing. It goes, you know, it's the listening to your body, finding goes, I mean, we've talked about this with writing processes before mm-hmm. where you've got to find the writing process that works for you. Yeah. And this is kind of in that same vein, figure out what works for you. If you mm-hmm. know that writing a to-do list before you go to bed makes you anxious and your brain can't shut off. Yeah, I thought it'd be like you and be like, yeah, this will be a great way to just sort of unload and not stress. But then I found out that that I was just thinking about that list all night long and all of the things that I forgot to add to the list. And so, you know, try either way and see what what makes what makes sense for you. And but you know, find that routine. Absolutely. Yeah. See what works for you. I also think that on, again, kind of piggybacking off of what we were talking about, exercise, nutrition is a yeah. huge part of that. And, you know, eating a ton of sugar and a ton of carbs and things like that, yeah. you get so many highs and lows. Sure. You get those, you get the that dopamine hit and then you get the crash. Yeah. And that isn't good, not only for your physical health, but it isn't good for your mental health either. Because sure. as you're, you know, as you know, you're, you're those spikes this, in valleys, yeah. it messes with your brain. Sure, It really does. And I'm a huge proponent of meal planning. Um, and it has helped me so much. It takes so much of the stress yeah. off of that. Yeah. And what I've found works best for me is I have basically like a summer meal plan and a winter meal plan because obviously I don't particularly want to eat like potato soup. Right. You know, right. in the and you don't in want the to be over a summer. hot stove when it's uh 90 degrees uh you know maybe right. we'll we'll save one right. of exactly. the ovens so much in the summer. <laughs> exactly. The summer is what crock pots are for. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> But I I have found what works best for me is I plan three weeks worth of meals. So I have I have three weeks of meals set out on my calendar, and then I literally just rotate them like yeah. week one, week two, week three, and then week one, week two, week three, and it keeps enough variety yeah. in my food that I'm not getting bored, but it makes planning the meals planning the grocery list yeah all of that stuff that's a goes that's a huge time you know, suck yeah oh it is absolutely it absolutely is. yeah so uh, yeah to that end I would I would also say if you if you can to, to add some sort of exercise whatever that might mean mm-hmm. to you I mean maybe it's that walk that you take every day and that's that's your exercise for the day absolutely count it you know Mm -hmm. check it off um is it doing yoga simple stretches on the ground just to kind of wake up in the morning that's what I do I do 10 minutes in the morning just to kind of stretch everything out because I know that I'm sitting and hunched all day long so I know that I'm not Mm -hmm. I'm not able to do much I've got a treadmill that you know if there's a big you know meeting or something I just hop on the treadmill and I'll just hang out and do that but yeah, if you can find, especially if you're stuck in the house all day long, you got to find something to sort of keep you going, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, I mean, I've gotten like, there have been days when I'm like, oh, I really need to get a walk in and I don't really want to go anywhere to walk. Yeah. And, you know, I live out in the country, so I just don't like, like just walking by myself on these back country roads. Right. Um, you know, and so I've taken where I'll either walk around my property, mm-hmm. just make big circles, walk around oh. the property, or even in front of my house, I just make yeah. a loop on the, you know, on the edge of the road yeah. and walk, set my, set my cell phone timer for 15 minutes and just and go. Just go. Yep. yep. And it's amazing how much clearer your head is. And if you want to, you know, if you, if you're like, oh, well, I don't want to lose that productivity. 
don't talk, you know, think about your, your plot. Think about your storyline. Think about your characters. Listen to a podcast that you've been wanting to about craft. You know, you can make use of, of your time for sure. Um, oh yeah. I, I think I think we might have enough time for one more tip each before before we've got to wrap okay. things up. Um, my my final tip would be some daily affirmations um, mm-hmm. before you start your day. Just kind of affirming to yourself that you've got this. I mean, there are lots of apps you can find for daily affirmations, but just sitting with your own thoughts and turning sort of those negative thoughts of. Ugh, God, I don't want to tackle this day to, you know what? Today is going to be an amazing day. I know what I'm doing. I I have a plan. I'm going to, and it just, it just that mental switch of affirming that you are worthy mm-hmm. of being an amazing human being can really yeah. change your mindset for the day. Um, but yes. I, I do that every it morning can. with my coffee. I'll sit there and I'll scroll through my affirmations. I'll say them to myself or I'll, you know, take a minute <laughs> and think about them. But, you know, it's, it's really easy to, to think about the negative things and focus on all of the negative things that happens and forget to see the positive things that happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, trying not to see the rain cloud, but to see, oh my God, the sun's breaking through, you know? Right, exactly. Focusing yeah. focusing on the positive versus right. letting the negative overwhelm you. Um, my, my final tip is going to actually be kind of up your alley oh. to an extent. Okay. Um. It it is a kind of a plan type of a tip. I like this. Um, you whether you use a planner or a to do list, mm-hmm. find something that you allows you to write down the things that you need to do, so you can check them off. Oh, so satisfying because. You, it's very easy when you are in that depressive and anxious mindset to be like, I'm worthless. I'm never, I I can't get the, can't get anything done. It's just, uh, why should I even bother? And if you have a physical list that says, okay, I am, I have like 10 things I need to do today. And as you mark them off, you get to see, and it is, again, it's kind of a dopamine hit. Yeah. That you get to check those things off. Even if it's a thing that I got up and took a shower, because there are days that that's all I could muster is I had the will to take a shower. Yeah. And they shouldn't, they don't always, they don't always have to be business like writing related. And in fact, I don't think they should be, especially if you are kind of in that downward spiral you need to celebrate the small wins Absolutely. you need to celebrate dressing you know getting dressed you know putting your shoes on I and your makeup today. on and doing your dress yeah i ate a healthy meal today yeah. i went out for a oh, i took a 15 minute walk right you know celebrate those little wins and um i again i read a book one time that said you shouldn't really have more than six business things to do in a day and so there's another one i really had three that there should be three yeah so you do not want if you have like i find that sometimes we are when we when we're in this depressive anxiety mindset um a lot of people who are who are who are like that who have those issues we tend to have huge expectations of ourselves and we'll sit down and make a list of 50 things that we need to do and we'll feel like a failure Right. And then when we only get, you know, 10 of them done, yeah, we're like, see, I didn't get anything done. I didn't get anything yeah. done. I, I just yeah. think it's like, no, yeah. you just had to, uh, you, you you created an impossible goal yeah. for yourself. Yeah. And Micro you were, right. You were setting yourself up for failure. And so being aware of that and, and trying to celebrate the small stuff, and set realistic goals for yourself, breaking it down. Planner planners yeah. are great for that because yeah. you can say you have 50 things that you need to do. There's seven days in the week. Mm-hmm. Break that 50 things Absolutely. up into those seven days. Absolutely. It's a lot more manageable and you're still getting them done. Yep. A lot less anxiety so, about it too. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And and um <sighs> to people who are creative um are about 10 times more likely to suffer from uh, some form of mental illness like anxiety and depression. So 
having these things in your kind of back pocket that you can go to mm. some of these ideas um, can be really helpful because yeah. um, there's a lot of us in this industry that do suffer or have suffered um, Absolutely. from depression, and anxiety. So find your, find your tribe, have a support system. Yep. And uh, yeah. And we'll alone. be back again to talk about this. If we, we have other things that, that come up or if other people in our group yeah. have some ideas to share, we'll come back and we'll talk about more ideas. But uh, for now, we are out of time. That'll do us for today. We will see you next time on Bound by Books. See you next Bye. time. Bye. Wait, before you go, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check us out on our website, boundbybookspodcast.com.